domain of one's own. Last spring, we had 10 accounts and gave those accounts out to um, faculty and staff who, for a number of years, had really been struggling with things like WordPress and Omeka and Scalar um, on a college server to which they did not have admin access. So they couldn't install plugins, they couldn't, um, they couldn't uh, manage the back end, and were really at the limits of what they could create in those spaces. <coughs> so we passed out 10 accounts to those faculty and staff and just said, play around with it, we'll reconvene next year to see what you discover. And overwhelmingly, um, the response was encouraging people. Many people uh, found their way very quickly, got off and running. Others kind of struggled along, but nonetheless felt that it was really valuable um, to have access through domain of one's own to, uh, to be able to administer their own web domains. And so with that pre-pilot feedback, we decided to jump into a pilot with 500 accounts in the fall of 2016. And, okay. um, and in particular, we started with a faculty learning community, um, inviting applications from faculty to participate in a, um, in a really a semester-long collaborative exploration of the affordances of domains for faculty scholarship, for teaching, and for student learning. And really, I think you're probably aware, um, if you are familiar with, with Domain of One's Own, you're familiar with Audrey Waters as a real champion for domains, um, as a radical act, giving students the ability to work on the web and with the web, and to really own a little piece of the web. So our wish with this faculty learning community was that, um, that a small number of faculty, staff, and their students um, would have access to the tools and the support to be able to build a digital presence for their scholarship, for their teaching, for their learning. And the, this small cadre of faculty who've been you know, pushing at the edges of our WordPress and Omega and Scalar, um, but you know, bumping up against the limitations there, really felt that, um, that they had, you know, that the, um, that they now had unfettered access to uh, building a digital presence for themselves with each other and with their students that previously hadn't been available and that we couldn't provide for them on our own. So uh, it's, I think, important in matters to give a shout out to the Reclaim hosting folks who provided just impeccable support for this. Um, but it's really the simple interface, uh, the very simple interface that allowed faculty, staff, and students to quickly um, become administrators of their own domains. A little bit of a background about domains. Um, some of you may know its early history, but just really briefly, it emerged at University of Mary Washington um, with Jim Broom and Tim Owens, who are now, uh, who left UMW to found Reclaim Hosting. And at the center of this is Martha Burtis, who directs their Knowledge Center, and who you'll hear from a little bit in this presentation later on. But the simple idea is to provide students, faculty, and staff domain hosting and the support necessary so that they have space to create online. And what we began exploring in our faculty learning community was the possibilities that students, as part of their learning to write and think research and create at Muhlenberg in our liberal arts environment could do some of that on their own web domain and that administering their own web domain was a key part of the learning in a liberal arts context. So in our 2016 expanded faculty learning community, um, we gave each participant and there were 10 faculty um, and about half that many staff. Um, everybody got a $500 stipend, and they proposed a project, whether it was to build a scholarly project or a scholarly presence for a digital project or a pedagogical project um, that would create possibilities for students to engage in a variety of digital practices, including blogging, um, multimodal composition, story mapping, video production, 
curating content related to research within their course. And um, so we spent a semester exploring this together. We kick-started the learning community with a visit from Jim Groom. Um, and um, he came for two days and really kind of kicked off a very lively discussion uh, and engagement with domains. And so if you're thinking about domains on your campus, finding a way to get Jim Groom there, um, I think will be hugely beneficial. He continues to uh, just keep giving to Muhlenberg through the relationships he built during that time uh, in many, many ways. So just as a, of course, all right. I'm just gonna show you a great clip of Jim Graham taking the mic uh, in the library for his talk and just like explodes with feedback and he jumps away from it. It's an indie ed tech moment. Um, so the, I want to emphasize why we started with a faculty learning community. Um, we met seven times during the year, balancing both theoretical discussions and kind of hands-on practical sessions with domains. We wanted to build faculty understanding of the purpose behind domains um, so, that, so that they would really have a sense of the pedagogical possibilities of working with domains as well as a technological foundation for supporting their students with domains. Um, but what we, really, what we really discovered with the faculty involved is that you know, domains is also an opportunity for faculty to grow. This is just a screenshot of our, uh, of our domain for our FLC. You can see the different topics that we covered, really rooted in digital identity, teaching on the open web, research and scholarship on the open web. And this curriculum is all openly available at the um, URL there. You're happy to take a look at it, borrow from it, improve upon it. Our faculty learning community was really also rooted in research on digital literacies. And these are some of the, uh, some of the ways we, we are imagining digital literacies at New England through the domains. <coughs> So faculty began designing their domains, um, building with not quite abandoned, but with uh, more freedom than they've been able to in the past. And we see their projects really reflecting the diversity of their disciplines and their um, scholarship. So this is an Italian studies professor's uh, domain on the uh, Orlando Furioso. And it's actually a series of maps where he's using neat line to um, map the kind of imaginary travels and the imagined spaces within um, this epic poem. This is an archaeology faculty member who, um, if you explore this poem, <coughs> he's really used his domain to share openly all of his workflows and the tool, the open tools he's using for um, data collection and, and visualization in his archaeological work. So um, I would like to show you the, the digital learning team. It's a, it's a large group of folks uh, who were kept apprised of the faculty learning community and the rollout of domains. Um, it's an interdisciplinary uh, assemblage of librarians, technologists, faculty, and staff. Um, and I think that uh, uh, this was our, our local group of folks who um, uh, mirrored in some really nice ways the kinds of collaboration and cooperation that we experienced from other folks who were further along uh, with domains at their institutions. Folks like Adam Broom and Martha, uh, Tim Owens and, and Jim Broom, who we uh, contacted and relied on very heavily as we were gathering information and making a plan uh, for how to be successful in our world out. Uh, so the other thing that we did, um, I think that um, is is really special, is we tried to foster that same kind of community building among our students who would be using domains. So um, we uh, launched a digital learning assistant program, uh, beginning with the pre orientation program. Uh, they came to campus early in the, before the school year began. 
the tagline for that experience was adornment of domain because a lot of times they like to stick out their their you know what part of their dorm room they're going to get before their roommate arrives. But they got to campus with uh, a, a dorm room and a domain of their own. And these uh, folks in the pre orientation program, many of them transitioned. Uh, to uh, being our digital learning assistants. We had an entire semester uh, before they started meeting as uh, uh, peer learning assistants, digital learning assistants with other students, when we could, uh, and a lot of it was very self-directed, but we could work to develop their skills in things like uh, digital mapping. Uh, WordPress was sort of a central component to all of their uh, uh, learning. Um, uh, Omeka and uh, archival uh, considerations, digital archives, um, digital storytelling, so some experience with StoryMap.js and some of these other platforms that we expect uh, students to be uh, relying on them. And, and Wilbur has quite uh, uh, an established um, history of peer learning uh, through our writing center and our other learning assistants. So we wanted to try and uh, replicate that with uh, our digital learning systems. And also, it was the single most fun part of my job for the last year was working with these folks. Um, we also had informal, uh, we call them donuts and domains, and I, I ate a lot of donuts last year. Um, so we clear time on a Friday afternoon for a couple of hours. We bring in a dozen donuts or so, and um, you could come and go as you wanted. There was no set agenda. There was a lot of crosstalk. And, people showing each other the things that they had learned around domains, which was tremendously helpful to me. I could also see, um, and all of us could see, some of the uh, sticking points, some of the bottlenecks and the places where people were having frustration. And that really informed the ways in which we could support faculty and students as they um, experimented uh, with the platform. Uh, the other thing is uh, we invested a fair amount of time in our documentation. So we uh, replicated the domains knowledge base that Adam Kuhlman put together at the University of Oklahoma. We ported it to RAD, which is another content management system that's available in the C panel of, of domains. And um, we uh, made that available to everybody uh, in, a, in a way that's hopefully easy to find and, and hopefully it's easy to use. Uh, right now we have 107 domains out of 500. And, um, we have about 90 or so student accounts and um, 19 or 20 faculty staff accounts, a couple of administrative accounts, uh, sandbox kind of stuff. And um, uh, students, this is a little uh, bittersweet. We have our first seniors who are now taking their domains with them uh, as, they, as they graduate. Uh, and we've tried to make that, well, reclaim especially deserves the credit, but we have tried to write some support documentation and uh, are reaching out to those folks and trying to make that process uh, fairly straightforward and easy for them as well. Here are a couple student domains. Um, uh, Nick Cunningham has a biochemistry uh, WordPress installation that he's worked on that um, actually has some uh, impressive uh, scholarship. Uh, I like this one especially because, um, and I think that he uh, wrote this article a little uh, um, tongue-in-cheek because of the whole donuts and domains thing. He's, he's uh, a frequent attendee. Um, but I like this because um, I was worried that the domain of one's own initiatives might, might skew towards the social sciences and humanities. So seeing people write about uh, biochemistry, I, I found a little gratifying. This is uh, uh, Jazzy Pigmentello's uh, 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 art and feminist uh, website called The Criminal Nipple. And she's done some really amazing work uh, on, on hers over the course of the semester as well. So we're really emphasizing here domains as a space where students can build something that is by and for themselves. And we're starting to figure out with faculty, we're starting talking to talk about, well, what does that mean? Um, is, it really, uh, is it really by and for them if I'm assigning it? How do we negotiate those? Um, 
those relationships as well. What kind of agency do students have with their domains? Um, but the idea, what's been really exciting is that people are building things. People are also breaking things, <laughs> like this video is breaking. So that's good. I can't show you that, but it's, um, it's a keynote address from Martha Burtis at last year's Digital Pedagogy Institute. Tim was there. In which she really she really makes the case that you know if you want to start domains on your campus and the administrators say to you what are you going to do when things start to break how are you going to handle that because we know how to handle those things when we're hosting them we're managing the servers on our own campuses we know how to manage that when it's hosted elsewhere we don't know and when um, 500 people have admin rights we don't know how to fix those things either but Martha basically said, um, you, you tell that administrator, it's good for people to break things. When people break things on the web, they learn more about how the web works. And then we'll work with them to try to fix things. And in the process of fixing things, they'll also learn more about the web. So we're breaking stuff, but nothing really bad. Nothing really bad. I've done worse in WordPress on the campus server. Um, so students are breaking things. That's good. Um, and we're also, um, we're also, one of the key takeaways this year is that it really matters how you introduce domain of one's own in class to your students. So the more intentional, as with any assignment, right, the more intentional and you are about articulating the goals, the expectations, the requirements, the possibilities, why it matters, the pedagogical rationale behind the things you assign, the more you do that, the more students are likely to value it as well. On the other hand, if you just say, and in this class you have the opportunity to create your own domain, um, and, and do little more than that, the students are going to ignore it. They'll, they'll maybe go into the cPanel, install WordPress, maybe pick a theme, but unless it is integrated into your course and the students recognize how you value it, they're likely to disengage. They're likely to disengage. So we're learning about that this semester, and I think that uh, in the summer months, we're going to be taking stock of some of the, the ways that domains was integrated pedagogically that, that had the, the best results. Domains takes root when students recognize how and why you are valuing a domain of one's own. Do you want to talk quickly about Carrie's site? Sure. It's a good example of what I was just speaking of. Yeah, um, Carrie's done a lot of work with how syndication um, can be applied to uh, the ways in which students work on their own domains. So um, she's built a, sort of a hub that takes the RSS feeds of student posts and pages and integrates that into one place where students can come and look and see all the activity. Um, it's not uh, anything new. In fact, RSS is you know kind of old school. But the way in which she was able to figure out how to make it work, um, to experiment and uh, select the best approach for her, and then make it useful for the students in her class, I think is really just one of the highlights of, of the whole faculty learning. Carrie has made a lot of space available in her class for students to, to work on their domains, to ask questions about their domains. The digital learning assistants, one of them is in her class, so she's kind of handed things over to him at times. And what's really key here is that she's modeling her students the kind of excitement of being able to create a space for your scholarship and your teaching and learning. So in our last moment, we just want to give you a sense of after one year of working with domains at Muhlenberg, what we see around the corner. Um, next, in the fall, we will open up domains to the entire campus. Um, Tim has worked on the documentation. That's all ready. We're working out a, a, a very, very minimalistic application process, just simply asking people, you know, what do you want to do with your domain, more so that, that we know how to offer support and help. Um, the media and communication department is integrating domains major-wide, so at the point of declaring the major to their culminating undergraduate experience, all majors in that department, um, which is, happens to be where I teach, will have domains. 
Um, in the fall, we plan to have a community showcase, not necessarily representing the best of, because uh, I don't know that we're there yet, but just representing the work in progress. And it's really been part of our practice from the outset to do our work in a way that is connected to the larger domains community and to be offering something back to others that they can make use of um, in their work as well. So we invite you to um, take a look at our slides, at, uh, at our domains work at Muhlenberg, and to really be in conversation with us if you wish, um, because we are now in a pretty good position uh, locally to be able to say, if you want to start domains on your campus, we've learned some stuff, and we're happy to share it. So thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.